extensively, but I'm a little shaky on fake histories. Ted, since the dawn of time, mankind has struggled. <laughs> the year was 1776. The place, Philadelphia. Benjamin Franklin and George Washington were having a drink. There should be a set of rules that govern the way bros comport themselves among other bros. I shall write this set of rules. And I shall inscribe it on the back of the Constitution. It's resolved. Barnabas Stinson shall write the bro code. Jesus started the whole wait three days thing. He waited three days to come back to life. It was perfect. If he'd have only waited one day, a lot of people wouldn't have even heard that he died. Then he's not going to come back on a Saturday. Everybody's busy doing chores, working the loom, trimming their beards. No. He waits the exact right number of days. Three. Plus, it's Sunday, so everyone's in church already. They're all in there. Oh, no. Jesus is dead. Then, bam, he bursts through the back door, runs up the aisle. Everyone's totally psyched. And FYI, that's when he invented the high five. I mean, it's really like the sexual equivalent of baseball's perfect game, but even rare. Yeah. Uh, the only player in history to have ever achieved both was mustache Pete Drexel back in 1896. Throughout time, there has always been one cutting-edge profession to which hot girls like Tiffany have flocked. 2.5 million years ago, man was a hunter. So the hottest profession of the day? Gatherer. As man mastered technology, the hottest profession of the day evolved. I'm pretty sure it's a hernia. Can you check again? And then man took to the skies. And so hot women put on high heels and became stewardesses. Ted, you are spitting on the grave of Sir Walter Dibbs, inventor of the Dib. It was 1652. The SS Dibbs was lost at sea. Look, I don't have time for a fake history lesson. Nathan Hale from third grade history? My only regret is I have but one life to lose for my country. You know what his real last words were? I'm peeing my pants! True story. Desperation Day dates back thousands of years. St. Valentine performed them in secret under threat of death. And right by St. Valentine's side was his best bro, St. Desperatius, there to pick off insecure bridesmaids. Whoa, check out that one. Her body is a perfect X. Play, play on. Hi, V. It was 300 years ago. Sailors stuck at sea would get desperate for female companionship. The manatees out in the water started to look like beautiful women. Mermaids. My name is John Clifford Letterby, architect of the Archangel. Look, it's a dream. It is, so just... okay. Theodore, you know the Archangel is a badly built, architecturally unimportant rat's nest designed by an overpaid, plagiarizing ether addict with two thumbs. This guy. New York is never finished, Theodore. She's a lady only a handful of architects ever get to dance with. Do not miss your turn. Dates back to ancient Broman times. Brotus, you'd tell me if, like, a bunch of dudes were conspiring to assassinate me, right? Um, totally, Caesar. Can you swear a broth to me? Sure. I swear. <laughs> And to Brote. And then he banged like a hundred chicks and invented a salad. True story. Please don't launch into a fake history lesson. The bro code can trace its lineage all the way back to Brosis himself. Article one. Bros before hoes. Okay, I see. Which was eventually brought to the New World in 1776 by none other than Christopher Brolumbus. Article 62. A bro who calls dibs first has dibs. Oh. Columbia University, 1941. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt developed an elixir to cure the common hangover. And what brilliant scientific mind did boozy old FDR pick to head up this historic task? Too many Manhattans project hit a few snags at first. After some trial and error, Dr. Stinsenheimer finally found the magic formula. The elixir was such a success, he was awarded the Brobel Prize. True story. <laughs> 